Joining us now from the Piper Sandler Global Exchange Conference is Doug Sifu. He is the CEO of Virtue Financial, and he's with our very own Bob Pisani. Bob? Hello, Kelly. Uh, so Chair Gensler has just given a major speech here uh, at the Piper Sandler Exchange Conference. And, Doug, uh, he's not happy about payment for order flow. Now, this is the process whereby brokers send right. their orders to market makers like you, Virtu. He says it's riddled with conflicts of interest. He's not happy about the fact that he says there's only a few market makers that are really doing this. Uh, he wants more competition out there. Is the average retail trader being disadvantaged here? I mean, fundamentally, the answer is no. And I think uh, uh, payment for order flow is something that's been around for 20 to 30 years. And it really has fostered innovation and competition within the marketplace. And I should say that within the marketplace, we have roughly 250 broker-dealer wealth management clients that send us retail orders. 95% of them don't take a rebate or payment for order flow. So again, the, the chair, with all due respect, is conflating the issue of payment for order flow with the ecosystem that has evolved in this country for retail trading, which has really enabled retail investors to have instantaneous execution at essentially zero commission on 8,000 listed names. Yeah. You know, the cliche that markets have never been better is actually factually correct. Yeah, I have been covering the markets for 32 years at yep. CNBC, and I, my impression is the retail investor has never had it better. But what's wrong with more competition? I mean, this is what Gensler is talking about. So, for example, he's floated this proposal about let's do auctions for the retail people, that there's too much power concentrated in your hands, Virtu's hands, Citadel Securities, two, two of the main market makers out there. Is there a problem with having auctions? No, look, I, we fundamentally at Virtu and, and every market participant that says we, we welcome competition. We're not anti-lit exchanges. And today, indeed, broker dealers, retail broker dealers, are free to send their orders to exchanges, to ATSs or dark pools, or, or, or to wholesalers. There's no obligation for them to send it to Virtu at Citadel. We provide a service. We provide guaranteed execution. We provide meaningful price improvement, $12 billion last year in meaningful price improvement. So we welcome competition from lit exchanges. Yeah. We've put in proposals to say that lit exchanges should be put on a more fair level playing field with wholesalers. We welcome that because, Bob, we're not internalizing all these orders. It costs us tens and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to source yeah. price improved liquidity on exchanges and provide well, that well, back to our clients. One of the things clients. that you've said for years is you do provide price improvement. Yep. You, you do actually help improve. You get a better price for it. Can you explain briefly how you do that? Because Chair Gensler has been very skeptical about that. Well, I'm not sure he's been so skeptical about it. I think some of the data, and he, he spoke about it today, the need for reform of Rule 605. So essentially, the rule is antiquated. It doesn't really cover the amount of what we call size improvement. And we've been very upfront and very transparent about providing that level of data. So what that means is, in the 8,000 names, to the extent there's not liquidity on a, on a lit exchange, fundamentally, the wholesalers are providing infinite liquidity at the NBBO or the inside price. So if we get an order for 1,000 shares in Reg NMS stock that no one's ever heard of, yeah. and there's 200 shares on NASDAQ in New York, we fill out 1,000 shares at that inside price. That's meaningful liquidity. 55% yeah. of the orders that we received, Bob, we provide size improvement. In a complete, you know, as he calls it, an auction environment, who's going to provide yeah. that? The, so, the, the liquidity ferry? I mean, it just doesn't exist. This is a very complicated proposal. Uh, there's not really a rule that's being proposed. Chair Gensler is floating this idea, yeah. and there's, the implication is maybe in a few months we'll make a rule proposal. Do you think, think anything is going to happen here? Uh, do you think there's actually going to be a rule proposed, or are we just going to try to get more transparency, more information? My, Gensler may have to settle for you providing more information on exactly how much it costs for payment for order flow. We're all about that. I mean, whatever the rule is in terms of providing transparency around how much payment for order flow, price improvement, set it at the midpoint, we're all ears. We've made those proposals. It's a little bit like punching a ghost right now, right? Because they, they have these high-level statements that aren't really back, backed by any data, right? We've provided real data about what we do. We welcome the opportunity. We would welcome a roundtable. I don't know why the chair is not willing to engage the industry directly on this. I'd be happy to come with him on well, this program. Well, wait a minute. And you're saying he hasn't talked to you? You're, you're one of the biggest market makers in the United States. Are you saying he hasn't talked to you? I, I have spoken to the chair. Uh, I would like some more time with him. And I think, you know, uh, him coming to the industry and coming to Virtu and understanding what we do and how ultimately how competitive the marketplaces. He talks about two or three wholesalers. There's about 10 of us now. UBS is involved. Uh, Jane, Jane Street, Jump Trading, Hudson River Trading, 
uh, Susquehanna, Two Sigma, anybody else can enter this marketplace. There's not a barrier to entry. There's not like an admission ticket that you need, right? It's a competitive marketplace. Every day we're banging heads with Citadel Securities to provide the best service and the best price to 250 clients. And some days we lose and some days we win. We'll see if this goes anywhere, but Doug Seafood, CEO of Virtu, thanks very much for joining us. And Kelly, I think the key point here is when I started with CNBC in 1990, it was not unusual for a trade to cost about 1% sure. when you engage in the actual trade itself. And compared to today, where you're still dealing with $0 commissions, the question is exactly how much does it really cost for a payment for order flow? Whatever that cost is, it's a tiny fraction of what it was more than 30 years ago. So there really is something, the idea that the retail investor has never gotten it better. But with that said, maybe we still should have more competition out there. The chairman brought up an interesting point today. Well, the debate is reaching a frenzy and really heating up. Bob, thanks for bringing us that important interview. We appreciate it.